Um, I'm going to tell you a story about the time when I was in second year university and I was dating my roommate, which is a good idea. Uh, <laughs> so I was dating my roommate. His name was Patrick. I'm not ashamed to say it. He is the, the, uh, not the hero in this story. And uh, he was very attractive. He was tall and handsome. He had these tattoos down his back. He was a bit of a pothead, <coughs> but, uh, but I really liked it. And the main reason why I liked it was because I had this apartment. It was four units. And he had this apartment that was five rooms. And they were connected by this door that was supposed to be locked. But it wasn't because we were in student housing and who cares. <coughs> so we had this relationship of convenience where he was really cute and it was really fun. And the best part was we never had to leave the house. It was ideal. And then I got a phone call from my friend. This is a girl I'd met in first year university. And she dropped out and moved back to Ohio. She was calling from the road because she was coming back for a visit. And it turned out that my other friends disliked her so much that when she called them, they said she couldn't stay over, and that she couldn't sleep on their couch, and they didn't want to see her. I thought that was incredibly rude, so I said, of course you could come to my place. And when she came, I even set up a little bar night with my friendliest friends and my brand new boyfriend who I told her all about. We all went out for beers, and she could sleep on the couch, and it would all be great. Except for, after we went for beers, there was a point in the night when we were all very hazy, and she got up, she got up and leaned over the bar, and sort of pulled down her jeans a little bit and showed my new boyfriend her new tattoo. This is kind of awkward, I thought. <laughs> then we went back to our house. This is a true story, I'd just like to say. Then we went back to our house. <laughs> we went to his room. <clears throat> the three of us watched a movie on his TV and hung out on the bed. I sat on the end and he rubbed her back. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty rude, I thought. <laughs> this is pretty, it's pretty inappropriate. <laughs> Then I went to the bathroom, and when I came back, the door was closed. And I knocked on the door and sort of inquired as to her whereabouts and when we were going to play out this sleeping on the couch plan. <laughs> and, and they muttered something through the door that was essentially that it would be much more comfortable for her to be in there. It didn't come out. And, uh, and that she was going to sleep there for the night. <laughs> so this was the point when I realized we'd gone far beyond rude. And... <laughs> And the next morning I woke up and when it fully dawned on me that my friend was having sex with my boyfriend in my house at that moment, I was just kind of pacing around angrily and uh, looking for something, I don't know, some dog to kick or something. And, uh, and I, I came upon her shoes. And he was this OCD pothead in this really weird situation. And he just, like, in, he, it was very important to him that everyone take off their shoes before they, get into, they go into his room and they were all lined up very neatly outside. It's a very neat person. So I saw her shoes, and I thought, well, that's a good start. And I picked up her shoes, and I went back to my, to my kitchen, and I got a, a Mickey of rye, and I walked down the street to my friend's house. And I got there, and I threw the shoes in the middle of the table, and I sort of told them this tragedy that had happened to me, and I had the shoes, and now what were we going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we talked. <laughs> And perhaps unsurprisingly, we didn't really come up with anything. <laughs> so basically, the only answer we had was that they were, I was going to leave the shoes there, and then she'd have to buy new shoes. <laughs> Which, it doesn't sound that bad, but it's actually pretty good revenge when you're 21, because your shoes are like a significant part of your personal wealth when you're 21. <laughs> and it worked. The next day, someone reported they'd seen her walking down the street, and, uh, and then she'd been sort of shuffling along in his oversized shoes, going to the Eaton Center, buying new shoes. So we're like, all right. <laughs> But then in the morning, she's still there, new shoes. So we got up the ante. Can't have this. <laughs> so I grab the shoes. I call my craziest friend. We go to Moss Park. We find some dog poo. <laughs> we put it in the shoes, and we place them like very carefully in the row back. Next morning, new shoes. I'm kind of like, I don't know what to do at this point. <laughs> but thankfully, my roommate, who's essentially a complete stranger coming down to my side here, I walk in at night. He's totally tanked. He's unzipping his pants. I follow him like a sled, jaw on the ground as he turns around the corner, pisses all over her shoes, <laughs> and then just walks back to bed and passes out. <laughs> it's like one of the best moments of my life, this guy just coming down on my side, you know. No, no compromises. <clears throat> but then the next morning, new shoes. So we're really not fixing the problem. <clears throat> so I decide to do this, this sort of retro thing. Where in high school, we used to go, we'd buy some porn, gay and straight, <laughs> we'd sort of tape it all together, and then we'd go to someone's house and we'd just plaster it with porn. 
which we, th we thought was really funny at the time. <laughs> and so we did this to his room. We waited until he left or went to the bathroom, I don't know. And, uh, and we, we covered, we pasted porn all over his room. And that really got a reaction, which I was really happy about because I really wanted a reaction. And so he came out of his room, porn everywhere, you know, threw it at me. <laughs> and he was like, don't touch my things. And I was like, yeah, OCD, I should have figured this out, right? That's your button. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, you know, we have this, we have this situation. I mean, she's still there, so that's, that's a negative. But on the plus side, like, we've ruined three pairs of shoes, and we've also gay porned his room, so that's good. <laughs> so we're kind of, you know, we're winning, the, we're winning the war here. And then we realize that our house kind of smells. And being students and in student housing and, you know, we've learned to ignore a lot of things. So we're trying to ignore the smell, but there comes a point where you really just can't ignore the smell anymore. So somebody finally brings it up out loud. And we go to the kitchen and we're kind of trying to figure out the smell. And we're doing that thing, you know, where you're like... And you're trying to like <laughs> go everywhere and kind of source it. <laughs> and we figure out that it's coming from the couch, which is not good. And somebody says maybe it's, there's a dead mouse under the couch. And we're like, oh, like, I don't know if I can handle a dead mouse. So the two guys, being, you know, the guys, they, they go and they pick up the couch and they move it over. And under the couch, <coughs> we see two glistening white chicken breasts, almost as if. Somebody, like three days ago, <laughs> had gone to the grocery store and bought a pack of chicken breasts, come into my room, dumped them over, and just pulled the couch over them. <laughs> they could not smell more. They smell like exactly what they are, which is a rotting chicken. Like, they smell like <laughs> decomposing flesh. They are upsetting. It's very bad. We have been chicken bombed. It's not, go it's not going well. <laughs> We've we were not expecting this. <laughs> so my roommate goes, he grabs the, the bravest roommate, the, you know, the pisser. He grabs the dustbin and he kind of takes control and he places us all along. I'm in the, uh, in the kitchen holding the door. Someone's holding the garbage, the garbage chute door open, whatever. And he makes a go for it with the dustbin, pierces the chicken, like putrid, disgusting stuff oozes out of that thing. We're dying. Goes back, takes a deep breath, holds his breath, scoops it up with the dustbin, runs down the hall, like holding this thing. As he goes by us, we're just, we're falling. Like we're, we're totally done. We double over, we're coughing and hacking. It's terrible. It's like the smelliest thing. <coughs> he runs out, drops the dustbin with the chicken into the, uh, into the garbage chute. It clangs down. Dun, 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 dun. We hear it all. and comes back in. Kind of does this big, uh, just goes to his room. <laughs> He's a very silent, <laughs> silent guy. <laughs> we all go to our rooms. I think we realized at that point, like, it was time to, you know, it was time to stop. Like, first of all, you don't want to go to war with someone who's willing to go to dead chicken territory. <laughs> and second of all, like, you know, we'd done enough. We weren't going to, whatever was accomplished is going to be accomplished. It wasn't going to work out. So I wasn't that surprised the next morning when I woke up. And I went for my, you know, shoe check. And I found out that somebody had called maintenance and they'd finally locked that door in between our apartments. We weren't roommates anymore. <laughs>